demonstration on the proper way of using the ES2000 or I1 Pro 2 to measure in your um, your linearization strips. So this is in Fiery XF 6.2.2. Um, one of the first things you're going to want to do is make sure that you do have the ES2000 uh, selected in this drop down list and under settings you can also choose the i1 Pro, which is the same as ES2000, it's just a rebadged version of it. And you want to make sure you have Use Ruler selected, do not choose large patch size, and have your device setting, um, device mode set to M0. It means you only do one measurement, not two. So I'll just kind of fast forward through the rest of this. But for right now, this looks good. Okay, so we hit next. Oh, media name, I'll just put in something. Test. Okay. All right. So now, when it prints out the strip, it should look like this. So <clears throat> the way you measure it in is you line up the clear edge of your um, your bar here. And it should line up with the very bottom of the top row of of the uh, the strip. So it'll be strip one. The clear edge lines up at the bottom. Also, you'll notice on the bottom of the spectro there is a small second sensor right here that rides along this strip here, known as the ruler. It's really just an encoder strip, and it helps uh, with you getting false reads. It's, it's less likely to get false reads as compared to the older I1. So to work this, you would hit print here, and then hit measure. It's going to tell you to calibrate the spectro. Now, when you place it on here, when you get this, this may be covered, this little window. When you pull it back, pull it all the way back until it clicks. If you don't pull it back far enough, it may not calibrate properly, so make sure it does click. And you want to make sure that that white area there is clean, has no dust and dirt on it. Look for any flecks of ink that may uh, cause your calibration to be incorrect. And you set the spectro on there. You hit next on the screen. It'll take a second. When it's ready, it will tell you that it's ready to read in. Now, there's two small holes on the bottom here. They line up with the holes on the tray. And you can read left to right or right to left, but you need to go from white space to white space. And you don't want to start on the colors, and you really don't want to start off on this, this area here on the sides. You want to focus on the media itself. So once you get it where you want it, you hold it over that space. There's a button, thumb button on the right hand side, or left hand side rather. You press the button, hold it for about a second for the lamp to come on, slide it all the way across, and release it. If it flashes green, you read it in properly. If it flashes red, then you need to read that strip again. Then you move down to the next strip, line it up on the edge, hold the button for a second, slide it all the way across, release it, flashes green. And that's how you read them in. You can read left to right or right to left, does not matter. And so let's read it in the next one. So if I were to read a strip in, let's say I release the button about halfway across, you'll see the light flash red. That would indicate that my reading is bad. So I can go to either side, go to the side if I want again, but it is very important that you hold this, the lamp, the button for about a second for the lamp to come on before you start to slide it. The most common problem is that people hit the button and slide it immediately and it doesn't have time for the lamp to come on so it'll actually start reading once it's already in the strip when it should be actually reading before it gets to the strip. And we read in the last strip here. And it's good. And you should get a little green check mark here. Uh, prior to this, it would show you the number of the strip you need to read. So if you're not sure which strip you're supposed to be reading in, this little box will have a number like saying four or five, three or whatever, and that'll tell you which strip you need to read in. Um, and also you want to make sure that these little check marks, boxes up here, there are uh, triangles and the colors should be pretty close. It shouldn't be perfect, but 
if you see like maybe one of the tri half triangles is blue and the other one is red, that would indicate that you read in the wrong strip. So you want to just verify that each one of them is reading in the proper strip because sometimes you can get mixed up and read in strip two instead of strip three and you will see these, um, the two halves of these triangles do not match. So that's really about it. There are a couple other strips. That's your linearization strip. I'm sorry, your ink limit strip. Once that's done, then you'd print out the linearization strip, which looks virtually identical. It's just going to be probably a little bit lighter because you've already done the ink limits on it. Uh, after that, you would read in the, um, your black levels. You'd be reading in this strip here on the top. This really is just for checking for wetness, which you're not going to see on the UV printers. So you are going to want to read this strip in and it will give you a suggestion for what its black level should be. And then once you're done with that, you read in the quality control. You do not read in these strips down below, you only read in these strips. And it saves this information for reference so that you can use it later to determine if you ever need to recalibrate. It will, uh, you read, it will print out this exact same strip uh, under color tools. It says recalibrate by measurement. You, re you read in this strip, or I think it says relinearize by measurement. You read this strip in, and it will um, compare it to what it did when it first, when you first made the linearization, and it will compare the values, and it'll let you know if, uh, if it's drifted and if it needs to be recalibrated, or if it's fine and it doesn't need to be recalibrated. And then once you're done with the calibration, that's the last step of the calibration process. Then you would print out an ICC swatch chart. This is the 928 swatches. Should take you about maybe about 10, 15 minutes to read this whole thing in. So. It's not too bad, but once you read it in, you won't have to do it again, hopefully, for quite a while. So I hope that answers some people's questions and uh, gives a good demonstration of how to use the ES2000 in reading in the strips in FireEXF. Thank you.